Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today using GDTF and MBR in Vectorworks. My name is Claire Manley, and I'm the Marketing Specialist for GDTF and MBR. Before we get started today, I just have two quick housekeeping items. The first one is that this webinar is being recorded, and I'll send the on-demand version via email shortly after this webinar, and it will also be posted to the GDTF YouTube page, so you can go to that page to find this webinar as well as additional free training content there. And lastly, please feel free to ask questions in the questions box throughout the presentation, and we'll save some time at the end for open Q&A. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest presenter for today, Brandon Eckstorm. Brandon got his start in lighting and programming for the entertainment design industry as a stagehand during his college years, but eventually moved into roles in lighting design, programming, and even as a production electrician. His notable work includes lighting design and programming the Virgin Mobile Free Fast in the United States in 2010, the trailer release party and convention for Star Wars The Force Awakens, the Million Man March in Washington, D.C. for MSNBC, and even lighting events for the Dalai Lama, the Pope, and Three Presidents. A Vectorworks software user since 2005, Brandon now works as the Product Marketing Manager at Vectorworks Inc., connecting the industry to product development and helping train designers on how to make the most of their software tools. So with that being said, let's go ahead and give Brandon a warm welcome and get started. Hello, my name is Brandon, and I'm the Entertainment Product Marketing Manager here at Vectorworks. And in this webinar, I'm going to be showing you how you can incorporate MVR and GDTF into your Vectorworks workflows. Before we get too far into this, let's start out by taking a look at the difference between MVR and GDTF. First, let's take a look at what GDTF actually is. So GDTF is a free open source file format that is a way to describe the characteristics of a fixture. So moving lights, uh, LED PARs, a conventional fixture like a Lego, how they respond to a control signal, uh, what kind of gobos they have, what do the gobos look like, what is its operating temperature range, how fast can the head accelerate, all those different things. The MVR file, this is what contains all of the different GDTF data. So if you have, say, two, three, six different types of fixtures, you would have two, three, or six different types of GDTF files inside of your MVR file. The MVR file also contains information like your patch, uh, the stage geometry, uh, curtains, truss, anything that's in the model. The MVR is really your virtual rig, and that's what's going to go out of Vectorworks or any other CAD software where you're drawing and starting things and going into a pre-visualization software like Vision or WYSIWYG or Capture or something like that and into a console like the MA3 or the Campsys. Let's go ahead and jump into Vectorworks and see how we can set all this up. In this file you can see that I have three different fixture types. What I don't have is the GDTF profiles for these. So let's go to the GDTF share page and get them. Now that we're on the GDTF share page, let's log in and grab these fixtures. So now that I've logged in, you can see that over here on the left-hand side, we have all of our fixture lists. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the Ayrton fixture first. Okay, so here we are inside of the Ayrton fixture. You can see we have two different modes for this. We have one that has a newer software, one that has an older uh, software version, or sorry, maybe a firmware version. So we can see that there's two different ratings for this. Down here at the bottom, we can see all the different information about the profile that we're grabbing so we can check it against our fixture profile that we have and make sure that it's correct and it's the one that we're going to use. And if we want to, we can also open it up in the fixture builder as well. So now that I've confirmed that this is what I want, I'm just going to go up here to this download arrow and I'm going to click on the download arrow and download it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other two fixture profiles, but I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll meet you all back at Vectorworks. Now that we've downloaded all the files, let's go ahead and get them into Vectorworks. To do this, inside of Vectorworks, we're just going to go to File, Import, and then down here to Import GDTF. And then we're just going to navigate to where we stored them on our computer. And then we're just going to grab all three, and we're going to click OK. 
you want to make sure that you've imported them correctly, we can just open up the resource manager. And then here in the resource manager, we can see, yep, there they are, all three. Now that we have our GDTF fixtures in the document, we can assign them to the fixtures. To make this easy, I'm going to use the find and modify command. You can use the shortcut key to get there, or you can go to spotlight, find and modify. And then in this dialog, what I want to do is I want to select all the moving lights that are Robe tarantulas, and I just want to select them. When I have all the fixtures selected, I can go to the object info palette, and in the object info palette under the GDTF menu, I can see that I don't see any of the fixtures that I imported, so I'm going to use the other. Here this brings up a dialog, and in this dialog, I can find the GDTF fixtures that I brought in. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Roby Tarantula, and I'm going to choose this mode. And now that I've chosen the mode, I can go to the Object Info Palette again, and I can see that it's updated the DMX footprint. Now, of course, this takes up a lot of DMX channels, so if I don't want to use that many, I can always go back up to the GDTF menu, choose the other, and then choose one of the other profiles, like just the standard wash. For this example, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as the fixture that I've already chosen. So I'll go ahead and assign the other two fixtures their correct GDTF profiles, and I'll meet you back here after I'm done. Now that we have our GDTF data assigned to all of our fixtures, I'm gonna show you how you can make edits to the GDTF file right in Vectorworks. At the bottom of the object info palette, we have the Edit GDTF Data button. This will open a custom web palette that has the GDTF fixture builder in it. One thing to note that this is a local version of the GDTF builder, so running this in Vectorworks will only apply the changes to the file that is in Vectorworks. This is not going to upload a copy of the file to the GDTF share page. It's only going to live in your document. Now that we have the fixture builder open, you can see that the first tab is the fixture tab. As supporting consoles pull their display name from here, you could edit the display name, but most of the things on this tab you're not going to be changing. The next tab is the geometry tab. Again, most users aren't going to be making many changes here. However, if you're going to be adding something custom to the fixture, like maybe a stand or a rain cover, you could add that here. The physical description tab will also probably not be used very much. You might do it for something like changing out an emitter color. So for instance, maybe you're using something like a conventional fixture and you're swapping out the tungsten fixture for maybe a bright white LED. The wheels tab is where most of the changes are going to occur. This is where you're gonna swap out things like custom gobos or animation wheels, even custom dichroic filters or prisms should you have them. The DMX tab will probably not see very many changes either, but the console does use these to create the uh, normal default presets. So think about when you grab a fixture and you go to the color preset and you grab the red, the green, the blue color, you know, any of those preset dichroic filters. So you might want to set something up for a split color, maybe like a red and green split color or whatever you have. One thing to keep in mind is that this only works on one fixture at a time, so no multiple selection. However, when you save the GDTF file, you do get the new local copy on your computer. It's not uploaded to the fixture builder. So you could take this copy and apply it to other fixtures in the document. The last thing I want to show you with GDTF is the use GDTF geometry control. Vectorworks has a lot of content, and our content team works hard every day to make sure we keep up with the needs of our users. However, the reality is we're probably not going to have every fixture that's out there on the market. Now, you can create your own fixture, but sometimes you're going to have a tight turnaround, and maybe you're not going to have time to draw everything out. So, this is where this is going to come in really handy. When you click this checkbox, you're going to get the geometry that comes with the GDTF file that you've imported. This way, all you're going to have to create is 2D information. It's a lot easier and a lot faster to do. This also comes in handy if you're getting an MVR file from a different CAD system. When you import an MVR file into Vectorworks, we don't know what symbol you actually want to use. So Vectorworks is just going to put in a 3D rectangle as a placeholder. One thing to be aware of when using this control 
is that the GDTF files most times are going to have a lot more geometry in them than a normal Vectorworks symbol. While this might make for a better rendering, you could notice a performance hit. To show you what this looks like, I'm going to use this Ghibli fixture. When I change this to use GDTF geometry, you can see that it changes to a 3D wireframe and top plan. And you can see just how much line work it has. This means it's going to have a lot of geometry. When we switch to a front view, you can see the fixture is not all that much different than the one that shipped with Vectorworks. In this case, it would probably be best to stick with the one that ships with Vectorworks. It's going to be a lot more performance friendly in the Vectorworks environment. Let's go ahead and remove the used GDTF geometry from this fixture. The last thing I want to talk about is MVR inside of Vectorworks. Vectorworks can import and export MVR files. First, we'll go ahead and talk about the export. To do this, we go to File, Export, and then to Export MVR. In the Export MVR dialog, we have a couple of settings. We can export all the objects in the drawing, just the selected objects. You can see that each object type that will be exported. In this model, we have some slabs, geometry, we have some soft goods, truss. Well, I think you get the idea. In this section over here, we have all of our fixture types. For this file, we have our three GDTF fixture types that we'll be exporting. To finish the export, we simply click OK and then we have to choose where we want to save the MVR file. We're just going to go ahead and save a new copy of this. Now the file is exported. Okay, so now we've seen how to export an MVR file. Let's talk about importing them. I'm just going to go back to a top view, go back to our top plan. So. What I've done is I made a copy of this file and I changed one of the fixture types and then I export a new MVR based off of that file. So now I'll go ahead and import that modified MVR file. So I'll go File, Import, Import MVR. And I'm going to grab Club Tour V2. I'm going to go ahead and open that. So now we have our Import MVR file. We can import just the data, we can import the geometry, or we can import the data in geometry. Now, for this example, the only thing I need to do is update the existing objects in this, geometry, in this file, because all I've done is just change one of the fixture types. So this might be something like when you go into programming, you might realize that one of the fixture types just isn't up to snuff for what you're trying to do. So you swap it out for a new one, and you find, okay, this one's working well, so now you want to update your MVR file. So this is what we're doing. So we're importing one change. So this is all I really need to do is I'm just going to do that and I'm only going to import the data from that. All I have to do now is click OK and it's going to update the drawing. And now we've finished the import. So now you can see that this fixture is no longer an Ayrton Ghibli, but it is a Martin Mac Professional. This is a ultra performance. So each of these fixture types has been changed. So our import was successful. So let's wrap this up in Vision. In Vision, getting an MVR file in is the same as getting in an ESC file that you would have gotten from Vectorworks. Just go to File, Open. We're going to go ahead and open up that version 2 the updated fixture type. And in this import options, the only thing we're going to change is the use fixture types from. Instead of vision, we're going to use GDTF and click OK. Here's our file. Let's go ahead and zoom into our stage. Here we are at our stage. We can see we have all of our fixtures in. They're in and they're ready to program. All we have to do at this point is hook up a console and we're ready to go, just like we would with any file going into Vision. But we'll leave the programming for later. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gotten a lot out of it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.